Hey everyone. So continuing on with the theme of recording updates on, on my trees. I didn't anticipate getting any footage this weekend because despite the light at the moment, it's rained all weekend. British summary. I'm going to actually go through a lot of my smaller trees. But I thought I'd kick it off with this unit. Uh, this is an elm that was given to me as part of a, a purchase I made from Nilly's Bonsai. I'm not really sure if you'll see on the camera, and I'm only going to talk about this quickly. It's got an enormously thick, curved base. Uh, Sam from Nilly's Bonsai takes great care in establishing the roots of its trees, so I'm sure, I've not repotted it, I'm, but I'm sure there'll be a fantastic set of roots underneath that layer of soil. This is another one that had, in the early part of spring, erupted. So I've drawn it back in slightly. I haven't removed any of the branches and as you can see I've not wired anything to give it any real shape. That's about the front where you're looking at it now, but I'll give it a little spin. The only reason I think this is the front is because that will best show off the, um, the base of the tree. I don't think you can see on the camera, but there's two flies mating on the table, <laughs> which is far enough. One thing I'm not sure about is what to do with the top section. As you can see, it was clean cut. And we've got two options. That could be sort of wired into the crown of the tree and then now that would need to be shaved off a little bit or that could be the the top and it would involve a bit of a chop and shaping at that point there the second of the two is probably more appealing to me because what you can't see on the camera is this was a big chop here as well so it doesn't really flow that well to the eye Whereas I think I would be able to chop and shape that into a much more suitable apex. Um, yeah, thought so it'd be good to get a big tree in to start the video off. And then what I'm going to do is go through my ginkgos, my zelkovas, and... I'll have a think, see how long the sun lasts. Okay, somebody asked me in a recent video how many ginkgos I had, or I responded that I've got seven. I haven't, I've got five. I did think I had more, but... So three are pretty straightforward. And these were all purchased at the exact same time from Jurassic plants. You can see difference in growth. Now, this one, I don't really like the shape that I've wired into it, but it was just getting so long and leggy that I had to reduce the height somehow. So I got a little bit of wire anchored into the soil. I tend to wire where I can quite loosely, just to minimize the risk of any bite. So I can leave the wire on for quite some time. But as I say, I'm not really keen on the shape of this. It was just, it was getting too, too tall for its own good. The second one, I've added a slight twist here where my finger is, a slight change in direction I didn't really it's got a change in direction naturally at that point 
away from me and then I wanted to add a subtle change back towards me in direction. But generally, I want to try and leave this alone as much as possible. And then the third of the three, I've not done anything with. As you can see here, I've got some bio gold fertilizer. I quite like the pellets, they break down. They're these sort of triangular pellets, they break down and just add a, a slow release of, of nutrients into the soil. Um, my intent with this one is to not touch it just to see what happens but you can see it's, it's not really growing like the other the other the other two so there's three let me move those the next one i can't for the life of me remember where i purchased this from and that should be i'm just going to check that that is all in frame yeah, pretty much. I'm going to move the camera up slightly. <sighs> yeah, I can't remember where I purchased it from. It's got some movement. I've had to recently just add a bit of movement to, to this section because the movement stopped sort of here where my finger is and this part of the tree was was flopping over so i just wanted to pull it back in a little bit it's got some really good branches developing though again much more near the top than than lower down but they're awesome so this again for the most part other than add a little bit of direction bringing the tree inward I'm going to try and leave alone until next year let it settle in this position see what the branches do there's our friend little hoverfly uh, see what the branches do and then make some make some decisions next spring And then the last one is my most radical. This is the tree that I've nicknamed the cannon. Um, when I changed it out of the garden center soil, the roots were absolutely disgusting. In fact, the tree came down I think the soil line was about there and then the root just curved up around and under and there was no finer roots <sighs> I was left there with a bit of a conundrum so I thought why not try something different I had no idea if it would grow and actually all of this growth is new I call it the cannon because that's to me sort of what it looks like you've got kind of like the edge of a barrel there and then you know what looks like a spray of party pop confetti coming out the end uh, it also reminds me a bit of a shrimp so um yeah we'll see what see what happens with this one i mean it's never going to be anything more than a a freak show and I think that is the front because again the root curved around to this side if I spin it around yeah, possible I don't know so then my ginkgos now I'm going to have a look at the um, Zelkovas that I own right this is tree number one just may I add it's not my weight that's that's bowing this bench down okay it's the angle of the garden it's it's got a joint in the middle so it meets the floor of the garden it's not me uh this is zelkova number one i've actually just recently cut this back just as an experiment and partly because you can see it's got a 
and supporting. It just wasn't supporting its weight. It almost looked like a willow, so that that could probably be removed now, actually. So, Zarkova number one. I'm always intrigued by how dry the leaves feel on these, even the new leaves. Number two, you can see I haven't cut back. And you can see the sort of the flop that these have. So I have to be careful where I position these on the bench. We do get a lot of heavy winds. Uh, so this is actually propped up in between a couple of other trees. Just help it. But again, I haven't done anything with this. So that would be the main trunk. And then we've got a few branches coming, are coming off. I'm going to do my best to leave this one. And then at some point, chop it right back. But at the minute, I'll let it do, I'll let it do its thing. Somehow as well, the pond basket for this has smashed. Which is bizarre, because I don't remember it ever having a fall. And then the third... Is this one. And this is interesting because it's got much less branching and a much thicker trunk all the way up with, with leaves all coming off the side. So again, I haven't done anything to this. Bear in mind, I can't remember when I purchased these. It was on the video when I went to the plant fair, so Three, oh, I went on my bike two months ago, possibly two months ago. When I purchased it, it was this tall, three or four inches tall. And now it is five, six times that. So very vigorous grower. absolutely bags of potential but my priority with this is just leaving it alone and not being tempted to anything that's interesting the li I've, this one's been out of the way on, on the bench so I can't really do anything to it and this is actually a lot softer than this one We get the same amount of light, same level of water, same amount of fertilizers in the pot, and yet totally different growth habits. Hmm. Right, I have one more tree that I'm going to have a quick look at, and I can show it you without having to stop the, the video. And it's this blouse juniper that I purchased. In fact, I am going to stop the video and change the angle. Okay, so this is a blouse juniper that I purchased a month or two ago. And this is the front. And what I've done recently, last week, it already had some great movement, but what was happening was it was growing up. So what I've done is add a bit of wire, and hopefully you can see it's just got a bit of wave-like movement in the main trunk. So it's extenuated, extenuated the, the rise there, the, the dip, the rise here, and then the dip. 
the next decision I am faced with, if that is the front, is what to do with this branch here. Because that blocks the view of the fantastic curve in the base of that trunk. Beautiful. I've been toying with the idea of removing it. But actually, I'm becoming more inclined now to think I can curve it around here. So it will be a, a lower branch. Remove, remove some of this foliage at the... further along the, the branch. There we go. So that would then flow underneath. That's my idea at the moment. And then the other thing I need to do is add wire to all of these branches and pull them down and make the tree a lot flatter. What I did a couple of days ago was just go through all of these branches and tidy them up. They had a lot of growth coming off the top and underneath the bottom of each branch, so it's making it quite bushy. Some of them still probably do need a little bit of refining, and then what I need to do at some point is think about what I do with the tree in the future specifically at the end here. Plenty of decisions, but the, the immediate work is to wire this out, get this much flatter, and then wire that branch into that position. I think I would welcome some feedback in the comments if you think that's the right move or if you would remove it. I think that way probably the best though. Uh, this was from, it's not got it, David Cheshire Nursery, £75. And obviously I've not, I've not repotted it since the purchase to orientate it in a different pot. That is work to come in the future. Junipers get a lot of Bad press have been really, really difficult trees, and so far, this has been an absolute delight. Who knows? Time could change that. Okay, while I'm here, have a quick look at these. There's a bunch of sycamore. I mean, they were they were tiny, little whippersnappers when I got them. How many is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think there's eight in there. And when they arrived, I didn't have any real bonsai soil. So these are in a mix of perlite and cocoa, but they're growing like weeds. So at some point. Probably next spring. These are all going to need to be separated and treated like individuals. I can't for the life of me see if this camera is picking up the detail. The sun is that bright, so hopefully it is. And this video hasn't been recorded in vain. We will see. Right, I'm going to finish with a quick little tour. This little monstrosity has no right to be alive. This was a, a lady on Facebook Marketplace was giving it away. When I picked it up, it had been dug up and sat to one side last summer in the middle of a heat wave for about a week and a half. I went and picked it up. It was an enormous bush. Chucked it in my car and I had nowhere to pop it. So it actually sat in this 
with the roots and the soil that it came in in water for about a week whilst I got enough bonsai soil to to then put it back in this. It was out the ground for about three weeks in horrific heat. I then removed most of it and you can see obviously there's some I did a rough job. I recently attached some some wires, had a bit of movement into the branches and what I've been encouraged to see is it does back bud and that's really promising in multiple areas you can actually see that starting to happen because I wasn't sure if it would or not it's a little heap so in a lot of soil spiders love this uh, next don't know if you'll see on my shadow, all the seedlings that I were growing, I threw them out here. Some are doing okay, some not so. I did a schoolboy error. I put them out here in the trays that they were sat in indoors. And they flooded, which is why they all look like they're in pure perlite. The perlite came to the top and, yeah, lost a few because of that. Next... Got my willows, probably easier to see from the other side. Four willows sat in a water bath. They absolutely love being wet, so they are permanently wet. I don't know what to do with these. They're all different shapes and sizes. At some point, I'm going to need to add a bit of shape and movement to them, but I'm not sure what. Right, I'm not going to go through and point out specific trees. I'm just going to scan quickly. Ah, the gooseberry that I got has died. So this is just a quick scan. This Thuja, actually. Move out the way of the sun. This Thuja, I picked this up last year too. This was about five feet tall. I cut it right back. Did some work removing some of the branches and had no idea what I was doing at the time. Very pleased to see that that backwoods back too. So that's going to get pulled down another eight or nine inches at some point. My two different types of ivy. These were an experiment. I cut them right back to see if they would develop branches both have though this one continues to grow taller somehow so we'll see what happens with those in these two large square pond baskets we've got 10 crab apple these were seedlings sapling no they were they were tiny when i got them I've wired some of them, others I've left, very much an experiment. So at some point next year, these will need to be separated and we'll see what these look like. My Cascade Catoniasta. Uh, let's have a look on the second bench. A few other bits and bobs on the floor. This was given to me again by Nilly's bonsai. I'm not sure what sort of pine it is, but it's got a wicked curvature. So excited to see what that looks like as it grows. This thing here, I can't for the life of me remember what sort of tree it is, but underneath there, I don't think you can see on the camera just how big that web is, but underneath there is the largest spider, and last week when I was just looking at the trees, I saw it dragging a bumblebee. 
underneath so that one doesn't get touched that can stay exactly where it is forever um <laughs> what is that <sighs> the name has gone i bought 10 of those last year to experiment with that is the only one that survived no idea what that will be turning into uh, and a few more bits and bobs and then at the end we've got some cuttings of different things to see if they'll root so that is my tour right cheers everyone hope you're well catch you soon okay this is the end of the tour lots of new maples there's two different species in here this back row are different to the front part I can't for the life of me remember what those species are <laughs> I'll find out in a few years eh? but they're growing well um, and you get you get some interesting variations in in trunk yeah, there's one there that's got a wicked curve one there wicked curve so they all do their own thing but all looking very healthy <laughs> <laughs>